Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are reporting from the SDN World Congress 2016 here in The Hague in the Netherlands and I'm talking with Nicholas Nico Fischbach who is Strategic Architect and Innovation Director at Colt. Nico, great to see you again. Great to see you again. You like the shirt. You like the shirt. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Excellent. Day, day three is more relaxed. It is. So, yeah. Look, you look more relaxed than I do. <laughs> um, since we last met, let's just sort of have a catch up. What's Colt been up to? I know that you um, we, 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 you were talking about an announcement recently, I think it was only yesterday, about yes. SDN NNI. Tell us about that. Well, there's, there's quite a few things that have happened since we last met and uh, the, the topics we covered uh, last year yeah. at, at this show about what our plans were for the next six, nine, 12 months. And yeah, as you say, you know, Mirko called in his keynote yesterday. We've done, I think, what we believe is an in industry first, uh, an end-to-end SDN-enabled NNI using SDN APIs between two major service providers, one of them being called. Uh, we demonstrated the full, the full basically life cycle, or as MEF would call it, this, this LSO life cycle, mm -hmm. where, you know, um, through an API, through an NNI, a third-party provider, could talk to our system to what we call Novitas internally, which is our, our SDN enabled platform, and look for services, book services, check the commercial terms, uh, set up the circuit, change the circuit, like modify the bandwidth, tear down the circuit. When we, we did a full demo with, with the execs of, of both companies, you know, using a live, a live, demo feed, uh, live video feed, sorry. So that, that's really cool because you know, it, it is, we've proven that it works. You know, using care isn't as a transport. We have mm. the SDN uh, enabled a NNIs and APIs on top of it, and I think it's pave, pa kind of paving the way for what people have in mind that, as a as an end customer, being it wholesale or enterprise, in the end you will be able to have end-to-end -end services with end-to-end -end SLAs across multiple service providers. That's really what we're doing: is breaking this kind of island model and making sure that you know our customers can have an end-to-end -end service crossing multiple boundaries. So you, you've, you've, you've announced that. What's the end result going to be? Do you know yet? How long will it be before it becomes you know, commercially available and in use? It's actually commercially available. So we've been talking to many, many other service providers. You, yeah. know, you, you, you can probably sense that there's a lot of interest uh, from, uh, from many other service providers, tier ones and tier twos across all the regions. Uh, or the next step, what we plan to do is uh, to actually open up all those APIs and uh, we'll be part of the MEF uh, Ottawa meeting. Yeah. Uh, they're running this LSO slash open LSO initiatives and uh, they have already defined some very high level framework around both the, the technical element, the commercial element. And what our plan is, is to contribute what we've done uh, with, this, with this other service provider and make it available to the community and then get the other service providers, you know, tier ones, tier twos to contribute and hopefully, you know, come up with, with some sort of a standard uh, that everybody can consume, so we don't have to repeat building an API and an I for every service provider. Right. So it just becomes something much more uniform. I mean, some people, you know, call this kind of some sort of an ASEAN federation, and that's the idea. And we believe MEF is the right vehicle. They've done the care and stuff, which is the, the technical base. They um, they have all the other service providers on board. Um, we don't need yet another working group. You know, I've been I've been probably ranting about that quite a few times. So, uh, <laughs> and I think also the the, the MEF vision around the cell network and what they want to do with LSO kind of totally fits that one. So yeah, we, we're looking forward to that meeting, which is like in two weeks' time now in October. Okay, good. Moving on then, but staying obviously with SDN. And another hot button issue of the moment is SDN Wang. What's Colt's position on that? Well, we have a, you know, a good story on that one too. We've been working it for quite some time. You know, I think in every interview we talked about NFV at some point, yeah, and that yeah. you know we uh, we make it progress. <laughs> that Mano is stopping us. That yeah. the technology is not really there yet. And I'm really happy to announce that. I mean, yesterday we we, we talked about it publicly. We, we actually released our SD1 proposition, which is fully NFV based. We already had um, VHCP, but that predates the uh, the NF, NFV movement, so to mm -hmm. say. So we actually went into production with uh, with Versa networks. So we're using Versa as um, as the VNF. Yep. Provider today, but you know, full x86 based, you know, f new new compute stack, distributed nodes, all the analytics. So uh, we uh, we went to the whole cycle of uh, minimum viable product, try release, and you know, going commercial with that one. So we're really looking forward to that. And 
we've we've seen a, I don't know it's, it was kind of some sort of a, some of a, I don't know hockey stick um, you know uh, reaction yeah. uh, for very long people didn't talk so much about SD WAN and then there was a little bit of interest about yeah. some you know kind of closed solutions or not multi tenant solutions or not provided by uh, by service providers and for whatever reason a few months ago you could really see the, the first RFPs coming asking about SD WAN and lately we've seen RFPs which have been fully about I want to switch from IP VPN to SD WAN help me. Really? So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah I mean the uh, the pressure. So we there's have momentum now, behind it. Though. The momentum is I know I know what happened. Yeah. You know, it was just something happened like kind of overnight from yeah yeah let's look at it to yeah. hey we need we this need now it. we yeah. need it now and now it's it's <laughs> kind of switched from you know we had we had we had a very clear roadmap on you know all the other things we wanted to do between now and kind of the next three four months and uh, we just had to completely revamp it because okay. customer demand is, is so high now and they're very specific already, interesting enough about which features they want, which ones they need, which ones they, they are happy to get rid of that they had from, from the IPVPN days. So it's, no, it's, it's really good, you know, and honestly, it's really the first real business application for NFV. You know, it's tangible, there's a, there's a business element to it, there's a commercial element to it, to it so yeah, it's, that's, that's really good, I have to say. Good stuff. Other areas that I want to put something to you, Nico. This um, OSS and BSS, but let's talk primarily about OSS. Was always a, a back office function, a sort of Cinderella of the industry, tucked away in the background when you know dirty old walls and old desks and all the rest of it. Um, and over the years, since sort of network transformation, cloudification, and so on, it's very much front and centre on stage under the under the spotlight. So it's been examined in a way that's not been examined before. What do you think in the industry itself? Are network operators and telcos and service providers coming to the realisation that perhaps their, the OSS suite that they have at the moment is old-fashioned and not fit for purpose in the transform network? I, I think, yeah, people came to the realisation that, you know, maybe some incremental changes to the OSS stack to support SDN and NV, those new business models going to market quicker and so on wasn't going to be enough. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're also in the middle of, of a major, uh, you know, what we call next-gen OSS revamp, because we realize there's many things that we need to have a look at. We have a, a big legacy or code legacy inventory system that could support virtual services, but it's not really, as you say, I think fit for purpose. Yeah. And there's the NFV minus stack, which is still kind of, you know, hanging somewhere out there. People are not too sure what they want to do about it. Um, you know, I think also the, uh, the OSS elements, you know, if you look at the pure OSS part, but also NMS, EMS were kind of spread between various teams. So I, I think it's also the opportunity to, um, to redo OSS, maybe not from scratch, because, you know, we have a very, I mean, most of us have a very large OSS estate and, you know, I'm not even going to touch on the BSS one. Mm. So I, I think it's the right point in time. And I think also many vendors now have, I think you call it the suite. Um, we're not too sure yet if you want to buy everything from a single vendor if you want to kind of slice it up and you know glue it together it's it's too you know it's 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 a little bit hard to say what, what we're going to do in in that space but clearly you know it, i think the oss guys came to the table they realized that to help service delivery service assurance you need a different type of tool sets yeah. you need new interfaces you need different integration Otherwise, the whole, the, all the, I think all the promises about you know, automation, agility, custom experience, you can deliver. O OSS forms part of it. You know, I think SDN and FV, all the cool portals, the custom experience, is kind of the wrap around it. But you know, below the wrap, you, you need systems that can support that. Exactly. Well, the reason I asked you about this is because, of course, NFV and SDN has been very much driven by the operators themselves, who said, right, we're, we're, we're in control now to the vendors. We're not going to buy complete suites of stuff from you and, and locking ourselves again. And now they're coming to the realization, <laughs> perhaps, that if they're going to get some new OSS kit, they may have to buy from one vendor. It is true. I mean, we went through the full RFP process and we, we really kind of went in with, you know, complete open mind and, and looked at, you know, startups, established players, things in between vendors that could do um, integration on our behalf or together with us. So we looked at the, at the various models. Um, it, it really depends. Again, it's like this whole thing. What, where's the kind of the, the right mix of do it yourself versus commercial off the shelf? Where do you kind of plug in the open source components? Because also some of those, I think this kind of kind of three-party constellation, if that's, if that's the right word, you know, how is that going to work and who's going to be in control? and how do you manage this complexity about changing requirements? Because we know, you know, once we start to look at the processes, the workflows, 
the, uh, the, uh, the, the user experience, you know, I think the OSS requirements are going to evolve how do you kind of govern, you know, this thing with yeah. one party, two parties, three parties. So that, that's going to be, I think that's going to be the challenge for the next gen OSS. And the other one is timing. You know, I think people have been used to the velocity of network changes now. You know, we've been much more rapid, much more fluid. Uh, OSS is still, you know, a, it's still bigger, you know, in terms of change because it touches processes, workflows, many more teams, many more people than something which is maybe more self-contained. So it's it's kind of trying to match the uh, the network rapidity or agility and morph the. I mean, slow less is probably not the right word, but mm. you know, OSS still take, takes more time because it's touching much, many more interfaces. Sure, very interesting. Evidently, things are very much on the move as we push towards commercial SDN and FE services. So until the next time, Nico Fischbach, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Martin.